I was born in India and I was 13 when I moved over to the UK and, and that, that was my lifestyle. I wanted to be like these, I guess, uh, drug dealers, hip hop stars, all of that. Hi everyone, my name is Aldrin. Um, I like science, uh, I'm fascinated by creation and uh, the world around us and so that's ended me up in my interest in working uh, in the science field, working in the hospital. Uh, I'm a cardiac physiologist so I like uh, cardiology, like looking at hearts, uh, learning about the heart and helping people have healthy hearts. Um, I recently got married to my beautiful wife uh, we moved into our first place a few months ago. That's been a real good journey, learning to be a household. Um, yeah, it's challenging, but it's, it's been good. Um, and I'm also serving the Lord in whatever way I can, especially in media. We've got a team of young people who want to see young people live just as Jesus lived. Uh, we want people to grow uh, to be just like Jesus. Um, and this is my story. So I was born in India and I grew up um, in India, in the north of India, in Punjab. And I was 13 when I moved over to the UK. Uh, I had a really interesting, really fun uh, kind of uh, childhood. Uh, I grew up in a Christian family um, and I had a, yeah, we went to church every Sunday. Uh, we had the pastors come around, we went to meetings and yeah, I guess uh, I, I grew up around church, around Jesus, around things happening, miracles happening. So that kind of gave me uh, a little bit of a context to spirituality and church. Um, other than that, I was just a gen, uh, just a little kid growing up. I had you know the same kind of troubles, struggles. Uh, just wanted to play, not <laughs> needed to work and study harder. All of those things that a general kid generally just has. Uh, so childhood memories, I guess, um, one main thing I remember is just playing cricket literally everywhere you know, with anything, to be honest, on the streets, in the park, outside in the house, inside the house. Uh, cricket was a big thing. Um, one particular story that's helped me in my journey, uh, even as uh, I get to know more, uh, more about God and know him more personally, was something that really helped me is when I was a little kid, probably around the age of 10, uh, I lost my stickers that you put on the front of uh, books and stuff. And I was looking probably for about an hour, maybe two, and I, all around the house and I couldn't find them. Um, but then, because I'd been around church and stuff, so I was just like, Jesus, Jesus, please, please help me find, the, find these stickers. Uh, and so, and the next place I looked, I found these stickers. And that uh, experience was literally etched into my heart as a young, uh, young boy uh, that Jesus answers prayer. He hears us when we call. Uh, he answers the cry of the, the desperate and needy, even though it was something so um, mundane like stickers that didn't have a big spiritual context, but God still cared to hear me and answer me. Uh, so, Around the age of 13, we moved over to the UK uh, and that was an interesting age to completely change uh, countries, culture, um, friendships, uh, all of that. And uh, that was a very different time, very challenging time for me, um, but it's, it's shaped who I am uh, today. And I think uh, as um, most young people growing up, I, uh, I was shaped by the culture around me. Uh, by the media, by what I thought looked cool, what I was portrayed, what the media portrayed as cool. Uh, and, you know, people who were famous, people who were wealthy, I wanted to be like them. Um, and so, so that, that, that was what was shaping me. Uh, and also coming from India, 
uh, I kind of knew English in some level, uh, but I wasn't, um, my accent, my diction wasn't great. It was, uh, so, so I actually ended up getting uh, bullied quite a bit uh, because of my, um, yeah, because of my being just moved over from India. And that, that really kind of um, hurt me. And, and I guess going through that period, I didn't really think about it like that, even though I got angry and I got upset. Uh, but but I saw I saw now looking back back at it I see how my I was looking for a belonging uh, people to just accept me and and just love me for who I am um, but when I saw that they did, they weren't doing that I I started to um, I started to change myself for people because I wanted to. Uh, be loved and accepted by people and for them not to be <laughs> mean to me and call me names uh, so I started to do things that other people do um, do uh, and yeah and, and, st and start to become like them and conform myself to them uh, and, and for in my case I started to become like the bullies and so, you know, so some of the people who used to uh, speak bad about me so uh, slowly got into smoking and that was a vicious cycle. Smoking started um, into something else, and and yeah, it was just a vicious cycle that that led me in a in a in a lot of darkness. So from from this point, I was um, yeah, I was now basically living this street lifestyle where I was uh, doing multiple drugs, selling multiple drugs. Um, yeah, and, and that, that was my lifestyle. I wanted to be like these, I guess, uh, drug dealers, hip hop stars, <laughs> all, of, all, all of that uh, that comes with that. I'd been checked out of school many times. I had failed many times. Um, you know, I'd, you know I, had, I had like lots of different issues uh, socially with friends or not friends or drug people. So and even been arrested many times. So th there was a lot of that that was going on in my life there. Um, that wasn't right and that was that was getting me down in, in one sense and one experience I remember actually that kind of sums it up for me is one day um, I was uh, in, in, in my flat there and, and looking into the looking in the mirror uh, I almost saw, uh, saw my soul uh, like a white soul and with the black holes um, within that that being that picture and uh, it was like um, yeah God showing me how um, empty I was becoming and I only like at that time it didn't mean that much to me but looking back at it I remember the experience I'm like wow um, that that was me seeing uh, that I was slowly depleting my destroying my soul um, so what that led to was 2008 we you know I, w I was living away um and i wasn't going to come back for christmas or i was or wasn't going to come back for christmas itself because uh, i wanted to go and party uh <laughs> with my friends at on christmas day when my parents wanted me back for christmas uh, but anyway um so we went to this party we were doing you know all the drugs you know uh, coming back doing the drugs um, but literally ended up in a in a massive crazy fight uh, with, with with one of the guys who was who was there at my place doing these drugs, and uh, yeah, and there was there was there was, a, there was a violent fight. My door was broken down, uh, um, and and li literally was like I sometimes describe it as a nightmare night. You know, I was um, I was nearly about to stab this person, and people were uh, holding me back, and 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 this guy. Uh, you know, was uh, was hitting me, and then he broke the front door. It it, it was crazy, and and so that happened. I, I left. I came back to where my family were living uh, at that time, and then, interestingly enough, um, we went we went to my cousin's house, and there was uh, he was on um, the voice radio, and he was uh, kind of doing what he was doing, presenting, um, and then we we spoke to. Him, my cousin and they were like, oh, why don't you come to the Sanctuary Church on New Year's Eve? Um, we've got a party going on. It's going to be a celebration. Uh, we're going to have some music, some food and all of these things. So I was like, OK, that sounds good. A New Year's Eve party in the church. I like uh, the tool. My cousin plays the tool. There's going to be food. So, so, so let's go celebrate. Uh, and so, so, so this was what was going on. And so leading up to the night, actually up to this um, on New Year's Eve, uh, going to this church, I remember 
uh, on the way there was there was such a um, I don't even know how to describe it. There was such just, uh, anger and just frustration and bitterness. Um, now, because so me and my brother were in the front seats and my brother was driving and I was basically just annoying him so much um, that my parents in the back were like, let's turn around, let's not even go. Um, and, and we were very close to that, but somehow we had made it to the church. Um, and so I remember it very, very clearly um, what I heard in church, um, uh, firstly, the couple of things that touched me was the uh, testimonies by young people. Uh, and, you know, w- one of them I remember in particular was saying how um, this young boy's mom had cancer and how God had helped them come through that period. Um, and that really had strengthened his faith. Um, so I think that really encouraged me. And then there was um, the message that was preached by the pastor. And uh, that was from Matthew eleven twenty eight that says, Come unto me, all your heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Uh, and I was definitely burdened uh, by so many different things. And so I just said to Jesus, uh, Jesus, if you take all, this, uh, all these things away from me, uh, all the anger, the lust, the pain, um, just the emptiness, and I, I will follow you and I will do exactly what you say. Uh, and so we, um, yeah, so, and that's what I said, I, did, I didn't, I, experienced physically anything amazing but in my heart I knew that um, I, uh, that God had met me and that he had embraced me and he had accepted me just as I am uh, even though I was such a bad sinner I was rebellious I was disobedient uh, I was just perverse uh, but in that state Jesus chose to love me and he came after me and he accepted me uh, and th- yeah, and that was just beautiful. I, 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 did, I wasn't good enough for God. And I could have never been good enough for God. Uh, but Jesus chose to just accept me. Um, and so we went back that night from this church meeting uh, to contrast. Uh, on the way we were fighting, on the way back we were singing uh, uh, Christian Hindi songs that we had sang in church like 10 years ago. And it was it was so so amazing. And then we got back to my my house, and somehow there was God TV. I guess my parents might have put it put it on. But there was this uh, young people's ministry that was uh, on there that that were doing a drama sketch. And literally, there were uh, the this drama was showing uh, young people bound up in chains, uh, drugs, and drinking. And uh, as I was watching this, something the Lord did something inside of my heart. I was sitting on the sofa, and I literally fell off the sofa on my knees, and I just crying. I was, um, I was, uh, yeah, just bawling my eyes out. And I think that was another process that God was just, um, yeah, show, showing me how bound I was, and, and that He came, He just came, and He freed me. And then all of us as a family, we, we got together and we prayed together. And the next morning, I got up. I went to my stash, all my drug stuff, my all of that stuff, and I picked it up. I went outside, chucked it in a bin, uh, chucked it outside. And since that day, I've uh, I've been learning to uh, have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah, but He delivered me from um, from the drugs, from all of that in an instance. You know, and 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 that's the power of God. Uh, however, I don't think, the, and I like to say it like this, that the true miracle wasn't me coming off the drugs. It was me finding true love. It was, it was knowing that acceptance and belonging um, that I was so longing for. Um, and now I didn't have to work for it. I didn't have to do anything for it. That Jesus just accepted me uh, as I was. And his love then changed me from the inside out. So yeah, so even though I'd, I'd been to church all my life, I'd sang the songs, I'd sang, sang the Sunday songs um, that we sing as children, uh, I'd clap my hands, I'd raise my hands, um, all of that stuff, but I still needed this personal encounter with Jesus myself and this personal surrender. Um, so if, if, if anybody watching has been through the motions in the... Uh, uh, in church, you've grown up in church, you've, you've done the thing, you've been part of the place, <laughs> you've, you've get, got up to uh, sing the songs, read the Bible verse, uh, all of that stuff, but yet there's, you, you still haven't had that fulfillment of uh, knowing that you're fully loved by God 
uh, and you fully accepted. Now you, now you now no longer need to look for that acceptance and affirmation uh, from other people, but that God is our ultimate source. Um, and I think that for, that for me is, is, is a burden of my heart because sometimes just because we're doing what other people are doing, doesn't actually mean that inside we are the same because it's easy to pretend, it's easy to wear a mask uh, and, and maybe re, re, uh, pretend on the outside that we're Christian, we're, uh, we're, we're reading, we're doing this. Uh, but it's, and, and no one knows, I, I, I wouldn't know that, but it's, it's our own heart that we know how, whether we are fully encountering God, whether we fully have surrendered to Him, uh, whether He is the one that matters and that's all, that He is our one thing. And I think m making Jesus that one thing is um, is definitely a conscious decision. And I think the gospel uh, is is that invitation. When Jesus said, um, oh, "If anybody would come after me, let him deny himself and carry his cross and come after me," and I think for me that that was. And I think maybe it was easier for me because I was such a bad sinner. I knew um, anything in my life didn't have any value because I was a even from a worldly wisdom perspective I was a waste of time and waste of space uh, I wasn't educated I was just doing drugs uh, living for my own pleasure uh, and I you know and and so I, I I could see easily right that I, I was so far gone I was a sinner under the wrath of God that you know God could rightly punish me because I, I was sinning um, but I think that's true for everybody in in, in some respects anyway because uh, everybody at some point has lied stolen uh, blasphemed God uh, or, or, or any of those things that our hearts are not right with God. And I think that's why that's the invitation that Jesus gives, even though that we are sinners, but he has freely died for us, that we can accept that forgiveness uh, and then surrender himself and, and consider ourselves dead, that it is not our own works, so I can't be good enough. And I think uh, as, as uh, believers or as Christians who, who've grown up in Christianity, it's very important for us to make that conscious decision. Jesus, thank you. I, I recognize that I am a sinner, that I have sin inside of me and I need you. I need you to forgive me and thank you for forgiving me and I accept you. Uh, and now come, uh, come as you have promised to come inside me through your Holy Spirit and change my life that I can be like you and live like you. In 2011, I went to a discipleship school, uh, which is run by the Repairs of the Breach Ministries, or Short Trot B. Uh, and, and, and that was like, uh, I, I, I use an analogy, a picture of what I, I feel it did for me. I was on fire for God, but you know, in school you have a Bunsen burners and they have a little switch at the bottom to, I think it's an air switch, inlet, outlet. Uh, and basically, um, I, I can't remember when it's closed, which way it works, uh, but, in one way, uh, or when you do it, it's it's a yellow flame and it's it, it's it's flimsy. It goes here, there, everywhere. Uh, but you switch it and it turns into a blue flame, uh, which the wind doesn't. It's a windproof um, uh, flame, and I think that's what kind of this discipleship school really did for me. Uh, and also the, the 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 mentors there and and the leaders there also encouraged me uh, in the wisdom of God. Even though I had a passion to serve God and God will provide. Uh, I have faith in God, but they're like, they're, yes, there is faith, but there's also wisdom. So they encouraged me to get back into studies, to um, to, to have a career for myself, to to um, uh, to when I, when I get married, <laughs> I would have something to support my family and my household with. Uh, and I'm so grateful for that because I see the fruit of that today. Because today, so I, I went on an access course, foundation year degree, and uh, in in, uh, in biological sciences that led to. Uh, ca cardiology and cardiac sciences and now I'm a cardiac physiologist and I'm working uh, I have a good wage and and uh, yeah I, I can support a household now that I'm married which uh, on on the retail I would never be able to do that uh, so yeah so that's and I, I'm, I'm grateful to God for putting those mentors uh, those leaders in my life as I got uh, as I got saved to give me that wisdom <laughs> to not have just zeal but have knowledge uh, with that. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about that zeal without knowledge uh, is dangerous. Um, but yeah, so I think that's how I'm, uh, I'm so really grateful to God. And you know, it's, it's, it, was, it wasn't easy, but it was, it was challenging to study, to go back into study after about seven, eight years. Um, 
but I, but God, God helped me, and, and that's what, it wasn't me. It was the grace of God, as cliche it might sound, but that that's the reality of it. Um, and I think also because I, like I mentioned, I like science. I love science. It uh, that also has helped me f- uh, actually um, see the beauty of God. Uh, in the way that our body is um, shaped and designed by God, it's, it's so intricate, it's so beautiful. Uh, it's uh, beyond what anything man could um, think about it and try to come up with. Uh, even in its imperfection, I think, man, man would be like, oh, what? Well, we don't even need that. Why would that even be there? But God in his wisdom does that. Uh, God has designed us to work, uh, and we get joy from it. and And I think the there's I think there's three elements to work, which I, I was thinking about recently. I'll share quickly. Um, is um, money is a big aspect, time and energy is the second aspect, and enjoyment is a second as uh, third aspect. So what generally happens is we give up our time and energy to get money, um, and generally will and so but you want to basically bring a balance where you can bring the, give the time and energy for the money, but also enjoy it. Some people give their time, get money, but they don't enjoy it at all. They hate it. And you don't want to be in that place. And, and, and the thing is, if you end up not thinking about it, not, not working towards it now, generally people end up in that places. Because then you have, because then you, as you grow up, you get responsibilities. You have to pay for things. Uh, then you need money. Then you just like, let me just find anything. And I've worked in factories, uh, uh, six p.m. to six a.m. shifts, uh, and it's you know, and, and it's it's not nice, but you have to do it when you have to do it. But but this, but that was a time when I was giving my time, a lot of my time, for not not a lot of money, and not even having any enjoyment. And I think with work and career, like the best thing to do is you want to uh, enjoy it. You, you also want to have a, not give too much of your time to it. Uh, and you want to get a decent amount of money. Uh, so looking for your passions, what you're passionate about. Nowadays, it's so easy, with, especially with the digital world and the media. You know, uh, we, we, can, we can sell, <laughs> monetize, monetize our passions because what we're passionate about, somebody else isn't. And that's the uniqueness that God all makes us different with unique passions and giftings, which other people can learn from, other people are interested in. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that helps somebody. Um, to talk about um, my spiritual calling and how I found it and how can somebody else find it, I think it's, um, yeah, I think for me it began really simple. Like I said, is when I got... Um, radically transformed by Jesus, my life completely changed and I, I wanted to tell everybody about this Jesus who took me uh, from death, dirtiness, uh, disgusting person to a beautiful person who is loved by God. Uh, and so I think that's our calling, right? uh, number one. I think so we build on that. I think we've got to get the basics. Um, and I think there's a, there's a uh, danger that sometimes we're looking for this big calling, we're looking to be the pastor, looking to be the preacher, looking to be the this and that, when that, that, is, that is not the primary thing. The primary thing we're called to is being lovers of God and telling other people about His love. And, you know, I remember just, uh, you know, I, I got saved and I, I think two weeks later, you know, I, was, I was creating up my own, my own t-shirts, um, it said, I love Jesus and on the back, reborn by the Holy Spirit. That was my first one. And, you know, I, I would just, you know, wear it and I walk around town and people would come like, and especially like this was a town where people had known me like, what's going on with you? And I'll tell them, he's changed my life. So it's using any means necessary, every means really that you can uh, to tell people about Jesus and explicitly the gospel because, and, 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 and if you want the, you know, what the, what the will of God is for once we become a Christian, it's what he said to his disciples, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. That is that is our calling, and I think as we do that, as as we express that, uh, God starts to um, lead us into more specific a- areas. Whether it's a specific uh, geographical area, uh, whether it's a specific um, people group, or um, or even a country. So I, th- I think that all comes out of that. So for me, as I, I was telling everybody and anybody, and I still do. Uh, being a young person and where God has brought me out of there was a deep burden 
on my heart that for my for those people uh, to come out of what I had come out of and, and just anything that they were in that they were trying to fill themselves up with love and acceptance and belonging in other things than Jesus when I know I've tried everything and there's nothing that can fill you up the way Jesus fills you up uh, and then going on so I met other young people uh, and then we start sharing our heart for young people together and, and also our heart for media because I, like I said uh, before I, I realized that my life my, as a teenager as growing up was so sh- much shaped by the media uh, by the songs by the music by what was hip and happening what was cool on the TV on you know or YouTube or all of these things um, and so I realized that that's a big thing, so I had a heart for, for to use that now to also to show people the that actually the truth of what really is cool and what really is life giving, what really is joy giving, which is Jesus. Uh, so, so these are the things. This is how I found my um, calling. So that all, so those things showed me. You know what? Look, there, there's an opportunity here to reach people, to share the gospel with them, to share the love of Jesus with them. Uh, so, so then, as we were sharing, as I was sharing this with Pabjo. Um, who I met at the discipleship school, we were like, you know, why, 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 why don't we do something more for young people? There isn't much out there. And so we, we started this TV show. Uh, and through that, we started to, um, you know, young people started to connect with us on TV. They started emailing us. They started to ask us questions, invite us uh, to their places. Uh, and then we started to go there. We started to meet them. And then we saw, you know what? Young people actually need a community. That's another burden because the, the the especially you know like the young people who want, who want to follow Jesus who want to learn there there might not be many other young people around them to help them grow in that uh, so 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 from from just the TV show we started doing uh, events where young people can come together uh, as and, and get to know one another and uh, and worship Jesus together uh, and have a community I would encourage you to just have a heart for God, read the Word of God, become a man or a woman of the Word of God. Uh, I think that's, um, that's the primary thing, is read the Word, know the Word uh, uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's what makes us a man of God and flourish in our calling. Uh, so I met my wife through social media. <laughs> uh, what? Well, uh, had to be, uh, but so so actually so you know I, I mentioned that we were doing start doing these uh, TV shows. So my wife saw, uh, it and she kind of just added me on Facebook, and uh, she started kind of just we started talking, and she's and so yeah. So I think that that's how we basically we, we started talking, and I think d- down the line years, um, we 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 started to build a relationship, friendship, connection. Uh, and I, we started to talk about the, the visions that we had and I, I, I started to see this, the heart she carries for God and she, the heart she carries for people and connecting both of them and the self-sacrifice. And, th- and I think for me, it, was, it, was, it wasn't um, about that she knew a lot about scripture. Personally, it was more about the heart she carried of, uh, uh, of being um, sacrificial uh, and putting God first and going the extra mile for people. Uh, these um, godly traits. Uh, that the Bible talks about. However, that didn't mean that I saw that that oh, I was like this is the, this is the one, and there was a there was still a long process. So I, um, I, I was speaking to my mentors, my leaders, asking them what uh, you know like this is what I'm going through. What do you think, uh, and so forth. And I think um, then praying together. Uh, with my wife, we, we kind of had this attraction, we kind of had this burden, we kind of, we, we kind of was like, we, we were considering this and we, we were like, you know what, let's, let's put it before the Lord. Uh, so we went through a period of fasting and praying without um, daily uh, connection or, or kind of just separate that. So we would, we would just, you know, uh, separate ourselves for the Lord. Um, and, and after three months, we kind of, we, we, we had this clarified um, heart and, and knowledge or impartation of knowledge from God that, uh, you know, he, he, he wanted us to go ahead with this. Um, so that, that was my personal experience um, of that. When is the right time? Uh, I think the right time is when you are surrendered to God and uh, you've put it before him uh, and you've, you know in your heart that it's right for uh for you to go ahead by God, um, on a on a wisdom side of things, it's uh, right, um, especially as a man. <laughs> I believe in the biblical motto: as a man, you can provide for your household. Um, there's a there's a proverb which says, first uh, prepare your work in the field, then build your house." 
Um, yes, I think that those wisdom things are, that are necessary and also looking at the character uh, of the other person uh, and yourself primarily actually. I, am, I, am, am I ready? Am I ready to um, go into this marriage not looking for what I'm going to get but to give? All right, guys, so that's my story so far. And uh, it's been a great story, a tragic story, which was changed into a great story by the good news of Jesus. Um, so thank you so much uh, for watching and making it this far. Uh, if you want to hear more stories like this and know more about Jesus, um, you know, comment, like, subscribe to this uh, channel, you know, contact them. Um, yeah, uh, stay blessed.